Hey church family, thanks for tuning in for another fireside chat uh, here on Friday. Um, if you're like me, one of the things that maybe has started frustrating you over the course of the last few weeks is how frequently people use the word unprecedented. Um, and undoubtedly as, as foreign and as new, um, unwelcomed uh, as social isolation and quarantine has been for all of us, um, as it continues to drag out, it's growing all too common. And if you remember a few weeks ago, one of the things that I mentioned was that uh, in the Bible there are a ton of resources uh, that help us even in moments where we have never had uh, an experience uh, like this before. And it's made me, this whole season has made me think a little bit about this passage at the beginning of Philippians. Um, Paul, when he wrote the book of Philippians, he was writing it from prison. So he was going through his own experience of quarantine or social isolation uh, at the time. And I think that we are all probably feeling um, much more uh, acutely in this time how important the gathered people of God is. Uh, maybe in the past we've taken for granted the fact that we could get together week in and week out and see our friends and be together and uh, encourage one another. And, you know, it makes me even think there just about how important the incarnation is um, and the incarnation of Jesus for sure, but even how that is a marker uh, for just how important it is to be physically present with people. Um, and when God chose to, to bring about salvation for humanity, he didn't just send a message, he sent his son. Um, and he was with us, as John tells us in John 1. Um, but how do you do ministry uh, when you can't be with people? Um, or maybe another way to frame that or another question to ask uh, in light of that, as we've been thinking about and talking about uh, repeatedly, our ministry pillars, the centrality of the gospel, the transformational type of community that we want to be and demonstrate, and also uh, missional movement. How do you do those things when you can't do them together? Um, and especially that transformational community piece um, how can you obey that? Um, or, again, to think of it in another way, how can you obey all of the one another commands of the New Testament? There are 59 of those. Uh, 15 of them are uh, different forms of love one another. But how can you obey those things when you can't be together? Um, those are some of the things that I've been wrestling with. And again, it's led me back uh, to this passage um, in, in Philippians chapter 1. Um, because Paul seemed to be able to, even when he was in prison, even when he was experiencing social isolation, he was still able to practice transformational community uh, in one sense. Even when he was in quarantine, he was able to discern the body, to recognize the people to whom he belonged. And I think the way that he went about doing that is through prayer. And you see actually in most of Paul's letters, him take up space to actually write down a prayer for his people. And in Philippians 1, 3 through 9, Paul writes this. He says, I thank my God in my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for all of you, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. In that passage, um, Paul, his, his prayer, strangely enough, actually reflects some of what we've been talking about on Fridays these last few weeks. Um, remember, we've tried centering around the three loves of disciples uh, of Jesus. The up love for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The inward love for those who are in the body of, of Christ. And the outward love for those uh, that don't yet know him. And you actually see all three of those things present here. And in another way, you could say that, that Paul's prayer 
this passage reflects our three ministry pillars. He demonstrates the centrality of the gospel. He prays for transformational community. And he also prays for a missional movement. Just really quickly, he expresses these, these up loves or his affection for God when he thanks God um, for his uh, relationship with the Philippians. Um, he prays that the Philippians love, I think both their love for God and also for one another would abound um, even as they get to know God and get to know one another better. Um, he also uh, prays that they would be filled with the fruit of righteousness for the glory and praise of God, that their lives would be lived with this upward uh, kind of call or this upward kind of bent so that they would be able to understand uh, their relationship with God as the, the backdrop and the centerpiece even for everything that they did. And then he expresses this inward love, his, his love for the body of Christ and for his fellow believers, this transformational community dynamic. When he says, it's right for me to feel this way about you. I yearn with you with, or for you with the affection of Christ. Um, you're partakers with me of God's grace. Uh, you're with me even in my imprisonment. Um, Paul was able, even in this time when he was by himself, he was able to discern the fact that he still belonged mysteriously but very practically and very really uh, to all those who also trusted in Christ. And then Paul also reflected this outward love uh, for those who didn't yet know Jesus when he was praying for their partnership in the gospel. That word strangely enough, is the word that we would typically think of for being an inward kind of love. It's the word koinonia. It's the word that we oftentimes translate fellowship. But again, in many contexts, this idea of fellowship has an outward bent. Um, it's, it's about being together with a particular kind of purpose. And the purpose that Paul prays for here is that the gospel would continue to advance, that the gospel would advance in their lives, uh, as followers of Jesus, but that the gospel would also advance through their lives into the lives of other people. And so he's praying for their partnership in the gospel. And what I think is really cool about this is that each one of those loves, the upward love, the inward love, and the outward love, or each one of our ministry pillars, um, the centrality of the gospel, transformational community, and missional movement, they influence the other one. Their ways of actually strengthening and expressing uh, those ministry pillars all through prayer. And in one sense, that's the primary way that we can discern the body and practice transformational community in this time. We, we practice, we strengthen transformational community best right now through prayer. Uh, but we're also demonstrating our, our commitment to the centrality of the gospel and our love for others as we're praying uh, for one another. And so I just want to encourage you today as you think about this and, and as you're thinking maybe particularly how to pray, as we've been going through the Psalms and we're focusing on prayer as the language of faith, we can pray those Psalms to demonstrate our upward love for God and our inward love for one another and our outward love for those that live in our neighborhoods and, and that we want to see reached with the gospel. But here, right here in this passage in particular, you can pray for deepening love for God, for yourself, for your family, for those who are in your small group, uh, for your neighbors uh, who don't yet know God. You can pray thanksgiving uh, for the friendships that you have with people in the church. Um, and as you pray for one another, you, you deepen, even though you can't see uh, your friends currently, you can still deepen your friendship in a very real way through praying Pick up, picking up the phone, calling and asking for some particular requests that you might be able to pray for. All of those things, very practical things that we can do uh, in this time. Praying for maturity and fruitfulness in one another's lives. Um, asking uh, God to give us success as we seek to share the gospel with those who don't know him yet. On and on and on it goes. Uh, there are a lot of practical ways that we can do this, but the bottom line is that even though this time is so unprecedented for us, it's something that other people throughout the history of uh, redemption have experienced. And I think we can learn from Paul here how we can practice our loves of God, of one another, and the lost 
our upward, inward, and outward loves, how we can also remain committed to our ministry pillars, even in the midst of this time. So I'm praying for you guys. I appreciate your prayers, uh, as many of you have reached out and said that you're praying for us uh, in this time as well. So thank you for that. Uh, we love you guys. We look forward to being able to gather again uh, together on Sunday.